It's interesting, and it's an interesting question. And there are probably many ways that I, more ways than I could count or, or recall. But, uh, I, you know, I once was asked that question in front of an audience about a few months ago, and it's hard, you know, you're searching through your mind all the ways that it has affected your life. I'd say, well, well how about me? How about I answer the Hugo second? Can okay. I answer? I love, I love yeah. with, with myself, it, like I said earlier, it's given me light at the end of the tunnel. When you know at the end of the day that there's something beyond this waiting for you, a paradise, mm -hmm. that there is a creator that you will be able to meet. We get excited about meeting the Donald Trumps of this world, the, Je uh, the Michael Jacksons. Some people, they cry, they pull their hair, ah! But now, can you imagine meeting the one who created you? Mm -hmm. Sitting and being able to see him and him being pleased with you? Mm -hmm. And you, all now, throughout life, all he wants from you is to call upon him alone and to do good deeds. You see? And at the end, now, the benefit is at the end of the day that paradise is waiting for as a result of being a human being because Islam calls you to be good, to bring out the best in you as a human being, right? So right. how about now? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not bad. For me, it was, it was, you know, I think the first thing that came to my mind, and this is the truth, is that for the first time in my life, I was able to uh, experience love again. I mean, growing up in a, a family where you're always worried about the person in your life you love most, not being there, you know, or being taken out of it. And, uh, and also, uh, having a father that you're, you, you grow up, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to love and trust, sort of violating that love and trust. You come not to really believe in love. And you don't let anyone get close. Yeah. You have to cut love out of your life. Because you know if you let somebody in that close, they're going to hurt you. So, Throughout most of my adulthood, up until the time I discovered Islam, I could never love anyone. The love came back now. Yeah, because I felt, you know, through the experience of prayer and through reading the Quran, but especially through this experience of prayer, my early prayers, you know, this overwhelming love. And it brought me to tears and on too many occasions. And when I would have these spiritual moments and feel the embrace of that divine mercy, it, it moved me in ways that I never even thought of. I discovered a spirituality I didn't even think I had. So the soul now started to feel. I, I, tell me if you agree with me. You don't have to, but if yeah. you do, say oh, you do. All right. All right. I compare it. I make it to like a child. A child, if you take it away from his mother, yes. the child starts to whine and cry. But when you give it back, after it's being passed around to all of these different hands, it's whining, whining. You give it back to his mother, mm -hmm. and now it rests. Did your soul find rest now? Yeah, well, actually, I found that it was a very healing process. Healing. The, 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 yeah. the, it was like something that's spiritual high, you're calm now, the soul is not the anxiety. And this is yes. what I was experiencing. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, and then after that, I could love. I mean, now I'm, I have a wife right now that I love very much. Of course, I love God. Alhamdulillah, I, which means all praise is to God. Alhamdulillah. And I have three beautiful children. You yes. know, and I really could never imagine that that would ever have happened, just because of my... The way, you know, the pain and the scars I had suffered yeah. earlier. Um, but it was an interesting one, like a child. I remember uh, once, when I, after I became a Muslim, I used to love to go to the early morning and then the Maghrib and the Isha, the sunset and the evening prayers a lot. And at that time I understood no Arabic, but I used to love to hear the Quran chant. It was a powerful experience for me. One of the brothers once saw that I was always coming and he said, uh, Dr. Lang, I see you always coming to those three prayers. Why these three prayers do you come when you don't even understand what's being recited? And I told him that, uh, my answer was immediate. I said to him, why is a baby comforted by his mother's voice? Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. You know, because even though he doesn't quite recognize, make out exactly the words, it's a voice he's always known. That's you know? the recitation of the Quran. Yeah, yeah, it felt like a voice I'd always known that, and that it's always known me. Yeah. You know, and I think it's, it was similar to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's... Uh, more points and more points. We'll cut out. You accept Islam, which real simple is when one becomes a Muslim, he just makes a declaration that there's none worthy of worship except the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And Muhammad is the finality of the messenger, the seal of the prophets. To name five for the greats, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus Christ, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. It's very simple. So now you accept this, you become a Muslim. Oh, you get some hard times now. Since more, you start having a tough time just because you, real simple, because you uh, surrendered yourself to the Creator. Mm. 
Well, you know, that was a short time after the Marine bombing, in, uh, the bombing of the Marine barracks in Lebanon. And uh, around that time, there was also the Iranian hostage crisis. Yeah. So Americans were not feeling very good about Islam. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, my friends didn't react very negatively. They just slowly drifted away. And, uh, so your friends became non friends Yeah, more distant. Distant. Yeah. This was too bad, you know, yeah. but I think, you know, I, I understand, you know, they felt I must have been going through some sort of loss of my mind or, you know, some yeah. sort of personal crisis or something. I, I Which you weren't, actually. No. You're just spiritual enlightenment. Right? Yeah. Connected I with your career. the same person I was a day yeah. before, I just I had something new in my life. Yeah. And it was, you know, I think it was inf having a positive impact on me, too. But in any case, yeah, they did drift away, and I met new friends, and I met a lot of friends in the Muslim community, and, uh, yeah, so there was that, and there was a, some risk to my my career, yeah, because I was teaching at a, one of the oldest Catholic universities in America, and they certainly, you know, there were some that weren't comfortable there in the administration with one of their faculty members converting to Islam. They thought sent a bad message to them, yeah. you know. To the, Did you end up losing that position? Or? No, no, you're still there. No, I uh, le left there. I got tenured there and I got promoted. You got promoted there? Yeah. And then uh, I did quite well there. And then, But I wanted to move to another part of the country. Okay. Yeah. So what are you currently doing now? You're still a mathematician? Still a doctor? Yeah, I'm a professor at the University of Kansas. You also speak at different uh, conferences, Islamic conferences about right. Islam. And you're yeah, and I write some books on that subject. Yeah. You know, because uh, also I've been, you know, as any convert does, the Muslim... Uh, the Muslims who come from overseas to the United States bring their own sort of cultural cultural stuff. baggage. Yeah. A lot of and we got to understand that yeah. Islam is not it's a variety of people from all different race, creeds and colors and yes. a lot of times what you see is not Islam. Right. It's an action of some culture that has nothing to do with Islam. And and they have their own cultural slant on Islam. Yeah. And so they insist that many things are demanded by their religion that are yeah. of questionable nature. And so you know that 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 struggle yeah. You know, the struggle to sort of distinguish between culture and religion and what is actually required by the religion and demanded by the religion and what is just more custom or, or you know, a particular cultural's application. You know, that, that's been a, a major effort. And that's what I write about a lot yeah. in my books also. And I think, like you said, it's not our job to try to convert somebody. We're not no missionaries. But it's to present Islam in its true nature and then let the people choose for themselves. Well, that's what, you know, one Simple. thing I really liked about the Quran's approach, I mean, you know, it even tells the Prophet, peace be upon him, peace it, it tells him that it's not for him to guide yeah. those whom he loves, you know, God guides, guides whom, he whom, whom he loves. Exactly. You know, it tells him that not to get all bent paraphrased, out yeah. bent out of shape, yeah. because people aren't responding. You know, it tells him, just deliver the message, communicate the message, and leave the rest to God. You know, so I, I like that. That appealed to me. What, uh, what, what advice do you have, we're going to close up now, to any one of our viewers that are truly seeking the truth and say he is from another way of life, whatever the case, he's an atheist, what would you like to say to that person about Islam, how it's benefited, and anything, whatever you got, you got it for 30 seconds a minute. I, I don't really know what to say, other than, you know, um, for anybody who's seeking the truth, I would tell them to continue on that path, you know, and, and do it sincerely and objectively and, and courageously, you know, and go wherever the truth takes you, you know, that's, that's what I would say, you know, that's what I've always told my children as well, you know, when it comes to all things. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Alaikum. Peace like be unto you. One beautiful thing is, look, we're both Americans here, <laughs> and we're saying assalamu alaikum. So it doesn't mean if, if he was French or Canadian or Japanese, if we didn't speak the same language, now we, we say peace be unto you. Right. Look at that. It's a beautiful. And we pray together in, in one unity, praying to the one God. It's very simple. Very. This is uh, something beautiful. Another, well, another miracle in itself. Well, it's good to meet you. Man. Good to meet you. <laughs> All right. All Take right. Care. I'd like to now close with letting you know that Islam is a beautiful way of life for everyone to see. And we're here out of the love, helping educate the people because through education we're building tolerance. Islam teaches, Islam is a verb, is an action, is something that a Muslim does, which is to surrender his will to the will of the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And we met one of those Muslims today. If you want to know about Islam, 
please come to the source. Because there are Muslims nowadays who might be doing some things that are in accordance with Islam. So we don't want to judge Islam on the actions of some Muslims. It's not fair. So come to the source. You can check out the Quran we have for free. You can read it. It's on the deanshow.com. We have other videos. We have other topics to see how, how Islam tackles these very important issues. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you.